Thank you for coming. I wish to speak with you both in a place where privacy was assured. We quite understand. What was it that you wished to discuss? With my father's passing, the seat of the Archbishop lies vacant. And so, in accordance with canon law, I have assumed his responsibilities. I should stress that this is a temporary measure. It was never intended that the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights serve in this capacity indefinitely. Quite the opposite. The statutes specify that I should surrender my powers as soon as a conclave of the senior clergy and the high houses have named a new archbishop. But in light of recent events, that would not seem appropriate. I confess I did not expect you to divulge quite so much quite so soon. The details of the Archbishop's plans, perhaps, but the true origin of the war and all it entails? I, too, had concerns. But when the Warrior of Light is witnessed returning to the capital upon the back of a dragon, one's options are rather limited. Mayhap I could have concealed certain details, but for how long? And at what risk? Should the truth have come to light in the meantime, how would the people have viewed my silence? After a thousand years of lies and secrecy, I could not well abuse their trust and hope to be believed. The time for deception has passed. I only wish the people agreed. That some would deny the truth I had anticipated, but not this many. And among the few who acknowledged that my father had to be stopped, no small number questioned our methods. If they suspect a coup, it will not be long before some turn to violence. It has already begun, and that on both sides. Men and women of the cloth are being harassed in the streets. Some have even been assaulted in the brew. Hilda and her people have formed a watch to help us maintain order. But such measures will not prevent the unrest from spreading. For all our talk of peace, the people remain frightened and confused. For their sake, we must bring the Dragonsong War to a definitive end. And we should be glad to help you, Sir Emmerich. But what precisely would you have us do? We wish to treat with the dragons of Annex Trine. To that end, I would trouble you for an escort and an introduction. Annex Trine? You would speak with Vidofnir then? We must needs open a dialogue between our peoples. Acting as my representative, Lucia will extend an invitation to their leader that she might visit us here in Ishgard. Were she still with us, I would of course have beseeched Isel's assistance in this matter. But as she is not, I must ask that you aid us in her stead. Will you do us this favor? Thank you, my friends. Lucia, I leave the rest to you. In the wake of the Archbishop's fall, the nation of Ishgard trembled, the faith of her people shaken to its very core. For a thousand years had they fought and died, certain of the justice of their cause, only to be told that their holy war was born of the sins of their forefathers. What then for those brave men and women, thus stripped of their righteousness but to despair, to deny the truth and decry its speakers?
And what then for those whom they defamed but to hope on? To have faith in a brighter tomorrow? A tomorrow in which man and dragon might live together in harmony, then as distant as the very stars in the heavens. Yet while we dared to hope, deep within his lair, the enemy lay, gathering his strength. Nidhogg, now possessed of his two eyes and the body of the Azure Dragoon, prizes to which he had laid claim at the very hour of the hero's triumph. sought the solace of peace, the great worm craved the misery of war, nor was he alone in his misbegotten desire.
terribly, terribly sorry to have kept you all waiting. You need not apologize. We arrived but a moment ago ourselves. Pray, allow me to introduce Kryl, who has recently come from the Charlian motherland. She has generously offered to assist us. Oh, please, think nothing of it. A trip to Eorzea was long overdue. You must be the Warrior of Light. Yes, you certainly do look the part. <laughs> A pleasure to meet you at last, sir. And who is that I spy but young Alpha No Levy Yur himself? I dare say someone's grown an ill more too in my absence. Or are those lifts in your boots? We, um... <clears throat> Miss Kryle and I met at the studium years ago. I shall forever be indebted to her for her sage guidance. It was no small task keeping him out of trouble, believe you me. The youngest ever to enter the studium, him and his sister, 11-year-old prodigies. Suffice it to say, social graces were not among his list of talents. Striding up to his seniors on his first day, head held high. What was it he said again? Thank you, Kryle. For what? I haven't finished yet. Would you care to attempt a more dexterous deflection? Ahem. <clears throat> Mayhap we should save this delightful conversation for a more fitting occasion, when pressing matters do not demand our undivided attention. A bit much, but better. I can tell you have been putting your skills to use here in Eorzea. Henceforth, I trust you will dazzle me with your eloquence at the first time of asking. Right, on to more pressing matters. Finding Minfilia and the other missing Scions. I gather you have new information to share with us. A new approach, actually. Tataru recounted the tale of your escape, and it gave me an idea. Simply put, assuming Thancred left some manner of trail when you whisked him away, as is almost always the case with teleportation magics, I am confident I can find and follow it. Then what are you waiting for? The wherewithal to do it. The fact is my abilities aren't quite up to the task. Not in themselves, anyway. If I had Master Matoya's crystal eye, on the other hand... Then let us all call on her forthwith. I think it best that you explain your plan to her in person.
is that trouble I smell? Or did you forget to wipe your boots on the way in? Forgive us, Master Matoya. We will be sure to wipe them on the way out. And may I say how glad I am that age has not yet deprived you of your senses. Ever so quick-witted, aren't we? To the detriment of your manners. Well, out with it then. What do you want? Pray, allow me to introduce myself, Master Matoya. I am Kryl, of the students of Baldessian. I hope you will excuse our unannounced visit. Baldessian, you say? Oh, yes. The old coot set up shop on the Isle of Val, didn't he? Regrettably, our Order's headquarters and the Isle itself were obliterated by a magic of immense power. I have the blessing of light to thank for my own preservation. Cryo, you too possess the Echo. Well, yes, of course I do. Our order is devoted to uncovering the mysteries of Hydaelyn and interpreting her will, particularly through the study of her gift to us. It was in the course of these studies that I met and subsequently befriended Minfilia. She and I have rather a lot in common. I had no idea. You weren't supposed to. Not that I wanted to deceive you, you understand. But precautions had to be taken. Yes, yes, that's all well and good. But you still haven't told me why you're here. The students of Baldessian are gone, and there is naught I can do to change that. But the science of the Seventh Dawn can yet be restored, and my dear friend found. You have in your possession an ancient crystal of light, one you call your crystal eye. I believe I can use it to focus my abilities and locate one of the missing scions. And there I was, thinking you might want to make use of my years of experience. Oh, wait here. Long did I ponder the nature of this crystal and its familiar radiance. But never did I suspect it was a crystal of light. On the cusp of an umbral calamity, souls blessed with the power of the Echo invariably appear. To aid these, her chosen warriors, Hydaelyn bequeaths to each a slither of her strength in the form of a crystal of light. But as her strength wanes, so too does the potency of her gifts. This crystal, born of an earlier era, is infused with a power far greater than those of this age. You could travel the length and breadth of the land and not find a crystal even a fraction as pure. Its value is beyond measure, as are the risks inherent in its use. No two manifestations of the Echo are alike. I, for example, can converse with beings of every shape and size, excepting beasts, contrary to what others would have you believe. Language has nothing to do with it, of course. Rather, I am sensitive to the whispers of the soul, their intent, their very essence even, the traces of which serve to guide the elementals to Yishtola. Far-fetched though it may sound, I believe that with your crystal eye, I may be able to pick up where they left off and follow the remaining trail to Thancred. That is, if I have your permission. Well, the poor sod's not going to find himself. So, as long as you don't drop it or take it out of my sight, you may do with it what you will. Thank you, Master Matoya. Then let us begin. Shroud, the trail. 
continues to the north and west, towards a mountain, the foot of Som Al. It was a near thing, but he was not deposited within the rock. I think. The hunters of Tailfeather know those lands well. I say we begin our search there.